Well, good morning everybody from Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Following the success of Wide Body Weekend 1, we went on to Wide Body Weekend 2, and today it's really good because today, just a quick 40 minute flight over to Dublin, but it's on a 777, and not just any ordinary 777, it's on a 777 with the brand new first suite, and they've opened up first class, the, the first two rows on the aircraft, which I've managed to bag a seat 1A to be specific. So I'm with a cast of people this morning, Av geeks, members of the Moments in the Sky Patreon group, I'll introduce you shortly. For most of us, this was a rare opportunity to try something different. Many single BA frequent flyers that I know would say, it's just a 777, and I've flown first many, many times. But for those who are married to life, and not just married to British Airways, it's not quite so simple. When I first suggested to a friend that we were doing this trip, he angrily retorted, it's not even as if it's a good aircraft, and it's drier than the Sahara. So today, we're going to test the dry air theory. Will we be reduced to dust, or is, as I suspect, the dry air simply an old wives' tale that has spread through Heathrow faster than the increase in gold guest list members cashing in on BA Holiday's double tier points? So, after a jolly few hours in the lounge, having champagne, whiskey and various other bits and pieces, we're heading down to the A gates today, a 777 off the A gates, which if you don't know is quite unusual because the A gates tend to be, well in my experience, domestic flights, but today a 777 on the A gates means probably we're going to get a bus. Now ordinarily I'd moan and kick off because I don't like getting a bus to the flight, but I might just work in our favour today because it means I'll be able to get some good footage as we climb the stairs onto the aircraft, I guess, but we'll see. I'll not put that on the video, yeah. <laughs> What were you saying, Neil, about a gaping hole? What was that? Another gaping hole. Speaking to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, at gate A4B, as expected, it is bus. A bus. Buses. Buses to board a 777. What are your thoughts about boarding by bus? Well, as someone who's in group one, I did sorry. <laughs> backwards. 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 There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it from the horse's mouth. 49k special 49k in economy economy plus the economy back all oh, right okay only worst boarding by bus jamie thoughts boarding by bus could be a benefit today see that big engine we will yep big gaping hole yep yep <laughs> And as always, I just wanted to say a huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters who enable me to bring these videos to you month in, month out. The ever-growing list of supporters means that I must be doing something right, and this month particularly, I'm delighted to welcome three new supporters, so a huge welcome to Joshua Lau, Ben Costello, and Stephen Catchside. A very warm welcome to you all. Mama General Electric engines powering us over to Dublin. Uh, so welcome on board to British Airways first class first suite with the door and I'll show you a bit more of that once we get up into the air but I have to say so far it is very very impressive we have obviously two windows here and I'll show you a bit more about the blinds and stuff as we as we fly and as we travel uh, heading just towards Dublin as I said this morning unfortunately we've probably spent a few more hours up here um, yeah, let me show you around. So you've got a uh, hell of a lot of legroom down here, and uh, obviously that huge TV screen there. Which I'm not sure if the entertainment will be running today, but we'll see as we go. And uh, lots and lots of uh, I was going to say working space, but it's not really working space at all, is it? Really, it's relaxing space. Nice little table lamp there, and then. Uh, all of your controls just by your left hand side here so you know the new club suite is very nice on board British Airways but of course it's so much better up here in first because you just get that more luxurious kind of feeling and as I say I'll show you more as we go so what do you think Neil first suite versus club suite I've not done uh, first no I've not done club suites right <laughs> only problem with this is yeah. No buddy dining if you're if you're travelling with a partner. That's a good point. Unlike the older uh, that was a really good thing on the A380. Yeah. Buddy dining. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
That's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a shame that they're, they're probably going to get rid of that. I think so, yeah. So. I think so. Yeah. But it's a nice feel, though. It's a nice cabin. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, nice, nice ambience. Yeah. And obviously, as usual, the crew, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was very, very welcoming, yeah, wasn't she? Very. Yeah. 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 With my friends now seated, let's go and get some thoughts of the seat and cabin. So overall first impressions, Jamie? Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Storage, much more than a 320 product. Uh, yeah, just a bit, yeah, just a bit. Impressed? No, no. And what are you having for your uh, meal? The smoked salmon. Smoked salmon, yeah. right, of course, of course. Yeah. So introduce yourself, Ben. Yep, I'm Ben, a uh, very young 22 year old, traveling in first class. Traveling in first class, yeah. yeah. First impressions? That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it's so lovely, isn't it? First time, though. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Then you storage space, stretch out. Have you tried the club suite before? I've never even tried the club suite. Okay, so, uh, okay, so this is, uh, this spoils it for us. It does spoil it. Yeah, a bit, yeah, but, uh, yeah. It's yeah. Awesome. yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. See if you smoke some champagne, so. Well, you can't beat that really, yeah. can you? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, now we're airborne, one of the things that I'll tell you a bit more about, which you may be curious about, was the title of the video. It's not as if it seemed a good aircraft. And uh, So a few weeks ago, as part of the planning for this trip, you've seen a few of us on board this morning. I invited one or two other friends as well, and uh, one of my friends came back quite uh, angry and said, uh, why would I want to fly on a 777? It's got very dry air, and it's not as if it's even a good aircraft to fly on. And I don't know about the last bit, because I do quite like the 777, I think it's fairly quiet, certainly very spacious, and to me it was the obvious next generation aircraft after the 747. But one of these rumours that's been sort of circulating around Heathrow, the Heathrow Forum for many years now, is the dryness of the air. And I first heard that from a Gold Guest List member many years ago when I first started flying through Heathrow. And since then it's just sort of gone viral in a weird kind of way. So one person said it and then everybody believed it and now everybody quotes it. So you say, I'm going to fly in a 777 from Heathrow and they go, oh, it's so dry, you'll turn to dust, it's so dry. Now obviously, you're probably not going to see that in a 40 minute flight, I guess, but it is a bit of an old wife's tale, I'm afraid to say. It's one of those things that's uh, an urban myth an old wife's tale. It's something that's just done the rounds at Heathrow for so long now. And of course, because one person said it, everybody believed it, people start re-quoting it. And I still can't get to the source of the original person who made that grand statement. But it must have been told with such conviction, because now, as I say, it doesn't matter where you go in Heathrow, on any of the lounges, you speak to any frequent flyer, or any of the people who hang around in the Heathrow forums online. He said, I'm going to fly in a triple seven. And they go, oh, it's really dry. I would love to find the person who started that. I really would. And I'd shake them by the hand because they must have said it, as I say, with such immense conviction. They must have said it in such a believable way that now everybody quotes it. So there you go. But I'm really enjoying this triple seven this morning, I must say. The first cabin, something I'm not that familiar with. It's, uh, it's very nice. It's very nice. I would happily spend a lot of more time in first. And uh, I'll show you the snack we get. So obviously, it's not the full first service this morning. So we're not going to get the pyjamas. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, we're not going to get the full first class meal. We'll get the Club Europe snack. Because remember, between Heather and Dublin, it's this time of the day, it's a fairly basic snack. Uh, so I'll show you that when we get it. But uh, I think everybody's having a good time. Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. So how are you finding the dryness, Neil? Are you starting to feel a bit dusty and a bit cobwebby? Well, yeah, but I, I think I just need another drink, really. Another drink, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah. No, it's all right. It's, all right. it's nice, isn't yeah, it? It's nice. Yeah. Very quiet. Uh, no, I've never done first on a 777, so it's really nice. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so uh, like I said, yeah, today just a very basic quick snack over to Dublin. Um, salmon and a gin and tonic and a nice dessert so uh so it's, it's very nice you know it's not too bad it's it's one of my better it's one of my more favorite meals in club europe 
at this time of the day so uh, so far so good I think as I say everybody seems to be having a really good time so uh, quite posh toilets as well with uh, the uh, LMS amenities and uh, hand towels also with the uh, mock marble top it's very posh very posh indeed be fitting for the first class traveller I guess so uh, ordinarily these doors would close that's another perk of the new first suite just to give it a lot more privacy so it's not totally private but uh, certainly you can't see a seat nave or anything when the uh, doors are closed but again because it's such a short flight they've just left them locked open which is fair enough I guess but uh, it's worth mentioning so we're now uh, 32,000 feet quite a high altitude for a very very short flight and it's quite a nice day out there I'll show you and another perk of course of flying first just like the club suite is the flatbed uh, but I have to say at over six foot tall myself I feel very very roomy here in the first suite and as you can see my feet have got lots of room which is always the test I use Hi everyone from the flight deck uh, seat first officer, I'm in charge just like to... So uh, yeah as you can see the seatbelt lights just come on now so I'll have to put the seat back up but overall very roomy very impressive cabin So Ray Yo. about this dryness on the 777 then you've was, clearly survived the flight It was awfully but was it dry? It yeah, was dry. very I dry. Taking a glass of water, a very small one. Ah, yeah. so that saved you. It did. But the rumours are true. It is very, a very dry yeah. aircraft. Right. Yeah. Sam will understand. Exactly. Yeah. He, he 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 knew this before we did. He did. Well, he warned us. So Joe. Yes. Very dry aircraft. Was. Would you agree it was a dry aircraft? Dying. Yeah. Are you dying on your feet because it's so dry? Yeah. yeah. Why would you want to fly on one? I don't know. It's not even as if it's a very good aircraft. Very good aircraft at all. What do you think, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> So that really is it folks, we've landed in Dublin now, an all too short flight of course, really love the BA First Suite and it's days like these that really make me very happy when BA put on these and other airlines when they put on these special planes, the sort of wide bodies on short routes, it's always worth doing just for a bit of fun. Obviously I could have stayed up there all day, in all seriousness would happily spend 13 hours on the BA First Suite. The dryness thing, you know, is it, well let's just dispel this, there's two things. Is it a nasty aircraft? Absolutely not. I actually really like the 777. I find it very roomy. And as I said, up when we were up in the sky, to me, it was always the natural successor, having flown on many 747s in the past in my earlier years. You know, is it a dry aircraft? I'm not convinced. I think that is an old wives' tale that's been circulating Heathrow for so long now that people just believe it. And it's become synonymous with the 777 out of Heathrow with British Airways. And I've heard it said so many times, I just don't buy it. I, I just do not buy that at all. Um, so, <laughs> any of you who know me, probably chucking your shoes at the screen now saying, how dare you say it's a nice airy aircraft. Um, you know, <sighs> if you've experienced that dryness yourself, fair enough, you know, I can't take that away from you. But I like the 777. Uh, I, I've never, and I've flown on a lot of 777s in my time, I've never found it a dry aircraft. I think it's just something that somebody said. I'm going to go and see a distillery now and see the Guinness factory this afternoon and then travelling back home tonight. So, very quick tour. I hope you've enjoyed the video and a brief insight into the BA first suite. I really enjoyed it. So until next time, friends, see you soon.